My name is Justin, and I just want to say thank you for an incredible year here in 2021. Over 700 volunteers came out this year in 2021. This year, we reached an all-time record of collecting 145,000 pounds of trash, no longer entering our waterways and getting recycled properly. Hey everyone, welcome to the Mission Enlightenment Project. Today we'll be talking to a good friend of mine, Justin Memora, who runs an organization called the Trash Punks, which is an organization which does a lot of great and amazing work. It's really hard to describe uh, in my mind. So today we'll be talking to Justin and uh, just to get things started here, let me uh, just ask the first question. What is, or rather, what are the Trash Punks and uh, what is your mission with them? Yes, the Trash Punks. Actually, the Trash Punks started out in 2017, and the Trash Punks are an energetic, positive, loving group of volunteers that go around the Bay Area and educate people, kids, adults, about what they can do from the environment through conservation. And physically, we do trash cleanup events. We do electronic waste recycling events for the community. And also, we go out in the schools, different organizations, teach people about what they can do to help preserve the environment at home. Uh, very finely put. So um, uh, what led you to start Trash Punks and what has been your personal mission behind it? Yes. Super, super fun question and answer. <laughs> what led me to start the Trash Punks is I'm born and raised in San Jose, California, capital of Silicon Valley, the capital of where Apple, Facebook, Google, all those giant companies that are changing the world as we speak are happening right now. And you would think those companies are in the most majestic, most beautiful location in the entire world. Well, guess what? It's not. It's in an area that has been like, without no pun intended, littered full of trash, lots of trash, lots of illegal dumping. And I was sick and tired of seeing myself complain about it going to downtown San Jose to work every single day. And so I wanted to create an organization that made it super fun and super easy to volunteer on the weekends or after you get off of work. And as I did more research on it, very few groups were doing that. There's only like two key, amazing, awesome um, non-governmental organizations that are doing that right now here in San Jose, Santa Clara County specifically on an ongoing basis. And so I wanted to create an organization to be able to make it super fun and super easy for anybody. Like when you're rolling out of bed on a Saturday and wanna give back to the community or give back to the environment at the same time, you could show up with your pajamas on and we can hook you up with coffee, some pastries to fill that belly, give you a litter stick and clean up trash in two hours and you'll be pretty surprised at how much illegal trash illegal dumping you'll, you'll pick up in less than two hours and, and it really helps out our environment and on top of that it brings community together and really that's the basis that's the root of the trash punks it's it's love love is our foundation it's actually one of our core mission and vision and values is love we don't do anything unless it's rooted in love and so whether we're taking off illegal graffiti at a park or we're cleaning up nasty trash in a creek everything has to be built on that foundation of love and and so that's why we're one of the fastest growing organizations nonprofit organizations here in santa clara county because of the events that we produce super unique and really fun and memorable for everybody that's in attendance kids to adults yeah, uh, uh, that I've seen a lot of the, the photographs and promotional media you have on your website. And it, it not only seems like everyone there is having a good time, but there's just a, a lot of people. There's a, definitely a lot of evidence for your growth there. Uh, before we uh, talk about um, just how huge you become and um, 
you know, a lot of the victories, which there definitely has been a lot, especially of, of late. Uh, what has the process been like or, or for starting the organization? Because um, you mentioned in 2017, I was talking to you then and you were really um, beginning stages of it and uh, you just uh, attacked it and um, and it it hasn't gotten as big as it has gotten without uh, a ton of energy you've been putting behind it. So what has that process been like? Yeah, first and foremost, the process for us to doing is building a strong leadership team. And so it started out with a group of friends and really it, it snowballed into what it is today. And so like we talked about earlier about love being the foundation, when I was doing outreach to find key leaders, key um, you know, key board members to, to start up the trash punks, I wanted to make sure that they also were aligned with our mission, vision, and values as a group and as an organization. So it started out with building up the leadership team behind the scenes. And then where, where we were back in 2017, we were just out there doing, you know, doing events once a month for fun. We are still doing it for fun. It's we're not doing it if it's not fun. <laughs> um, but where we at now is we got to a point where we want to become officially 501c3 as a nonprofit recognized organization, the state and the federal government. And with that, we file paperwork for that um, because we're at that level. We got to that point where we are ready to take it to the next level. And um, we find that once we get to that level, uh, we'll be able to take this on even bigger and better than we're able to right now. So uh, back in 2017, we were a volunteer organization and fiscally sponsored by the church that I personally go to and Echo Church. And they've been able to support us from 2017 to today, which has been a fantastic partnership that we've been having with them um, because one of their key mission and values is outreach into the community and helping people out. And what better way than using us as a hands and feet to be able to reach out uh, to people, bring community together around a common goal, which is cleaning the environment and doing good for the, for the, um, for the environment through conservation. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, they, they're very supportive of, of trash punks and, um, I, uh, see you often, uh, have events, uh, at their location. That that's awesome. Um, and I'm really happy that you've gotten so big, you're able to transition to that next phase because, uh, you guys, um, have been putting in the work and deserve to get to that level. Um, speaking of putting in the work, I was just peeking at, uh, some of the videos and promotional material you guys have been putting out and at 2021, uh, was, uh, very busy for you guys. Uh, can you, uh, just highlight some major victories you guys have been having with trash punks? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, from cleaning up a quarter million tons of trash, that's, I mean, that's a huge victory right then and there. It's sad to celebrate that because, there shouldn't be a quarter million tons of trash, you know, within our, uh, within our realm. Um, but that's a huge victory. The amount of electronic waste recycling events that we've done has been next level too. So us being here where I live in the Silicon Valley, the Bay Area, so many tech companies out there are here and they have a lot, a lot of electronic waste, right? Wires, hard drives. Um, cell phones, you know, that people just kind of disregard and just throw it in the trash because they have no idea what to do with it. And I'll give you this crazy statistic that, that we just found out. 416,000 cell phones are thrown away each day. It's not even each year, that's each day, which is bananas. So this year, what we're doing is we're collecting these cell phones and we're working with an organization called EcoCell. And what they do is they will recycle those cell phones. Either they will turn it into usable cell phones and give it to uh, countries that really need cell phone usage, or if it's totally damaged beyond repair, what they'll do is they'll recycle all those items and make sure that it goes back into reusing of those cell phones. So those are a couple of different things. Uh, just the major wins that we had back in 2021 is we're pivoting I mean, we're still in pandemic, right? But we don't see an obstacle as a barrier. We turn it into an opportunity. And so with that, we were able to pivot and do even more events than we've ever done in 2021 as things started to kind of reopen up. But we didn't look at 
things can close down as uh, as a barrier because guess what? There's a lot, there's even more trash because we were sheltered in place for so long. It just built up and people just unfortunately just started throwing it out on the streets because you could only put so much in those trash cans. And so people would find ways to dump this illegal trash, illegal dumping happening all across Santa Clara County. And it's just sad. Uh, but like I said, we see an obstacle and we turn into an opportunity and we've been able to partner with other organizations, other churches, the scouts, um, other community groups, and bring them together, neighborhood associations to do so. And then with that, we also empower more people to be able to do their own cleanup. They don't need the trash bunks to host an event for you to clean up your neighborhood. We give you the tools and we connect you with the right people for you to have those right tools, trash bags, litter sticks, and the city will come and pick up all those trash bags free of charge. It's available to those that live here in Santa Clara County, in San Jose specifically. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I uh, I did want to point out one um, major victory you had uh, pretty early on with Trash Trunks, maybe halfway through. was I think it was 2019. Uh, you were recognized by uh, Sam Licardo, mayor of San Jose, You're up there in the dais, and they gave you a big uh, placard. Um, yes. Yeah. How how how's you how have you um, created this relationship with the city? How how is that? Um, where did that momentum come from? I guess is my question. Yeah. Great question. So that really started out with working with the council members. So in every district of San Jose, you have a council member that represents the people of that district. And so what I would do is reach out to the council member and their chief of staff and let them know, hey, we're doing a trash event clean up in your neighborhood. We're going to clean up this area of your district. If you're available, come on out, support us. You know, we need some help. We're a volunteer organization. We have no funding. And so uh, 100% of the time, the council member would be able to support us with a grant. It would help pay for equipment, PPE, meals, and um, any other charges that would incur on our particular event. None of, our, none of our team leaders are paid. All of us, including myself, even as the president, are all volunteer. We're all volunteer with the Trash Punks. And so all those funds, all those donations that we've received go to funnel to literally do events here in Santa Clara County. And that's really how it started with making that connection, just literally cold calling, cold emailing these council members and their chief of staff and let them know we're going to be coming to your district. And that's really how we built the relationship with that. And then with that, um, you know, the mayor is always involved because uh, they need to vote on because it's public funds. They need to vote on where these grant funds and monies go to. And so our name was popping up a lot uh, at these council meetings. And then the mayor, he actually was one of one of the only, uh, I guess you could say, uh, city council members, if you will, that that's probably he's been at been a majority of our events that partner up with council members, which is fantastic. I know he's citywide, uh, but he's one of the ones that goes out there, rolls up his sleeves, gets real dirty, um, and is out there for a while cleaning up the trash. So it's really great to see uh, our public officials, you know, um, helping out and cleaning up the trash, and not only just kind of being a presence, but but being out there and, and getting their hands and feet dirty. Yeah, definitely. That um, I, I I know that about uh, Mr. Licardo. He uh, he definitely is very involved. Not just trash bunks. Uh, he he's one of the good ones. Um, so, what does twenty two or twenty twenty two look like for uh, trash bunks? I know you guys had a lot of momentum in twenty twenty one, and uh, do you guys have a lot coming up? Yes. Yeah, so, our uh, when our leadership team met. Our goal is to do over 25 events this year. That's including trash cleanup events. That's including electronic waste recycling events. And we just had uh, recently in February, we had our first electronic free community electronic waste recycling events here in San Jose. And we're able to take off a ton of that e-waste off of people's hands, whether it's an old tube TV from the 70s, all the way to a Walkman tape deck to a record player and just a bunch of just cables and wires, laptops, you name it, we take it. And so uh, we were able to have our very first one this, uh, this past weekend here in San Jose. And then coming up, we have some really amazing events coming up. For example, for Earth Day weekend, that's going to be uh, here in April, April 22nd through the 24th. 
on Friday after work. We're going to be doing a Guadalupe River cleanup where after work, you could come out out, clean some trash with us in the evening, right before the sun goes down and, and, and really set the tone for the weekend to give back to the environment. And then those other two days, Saturday and Sunday, the uh, 23rd and 24th, will be at the Tech Interactive, where we are hosting another electronic waste recycling event for the community from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can come on out and recycle all of that electronic waste. And on top of that, we also take cardboard and we take metals too, which is pretty awesome, and batteries. So if you have any of those items, come on out, bring it out, um, and uh, we'd be glad to take that. And then we'll be doing lots more creek, river, and street cleanups as well. And we have uh, our calendar. will be up to date on our website. And the best way to really get information is to sign up on our email list. Right. And the email list, uh, as well as a link to your website, will be in the description below. Uh, next, next question here, then. Um, there's, I guess, two levels to this. Uh, one is obviously if someone wants to support you, um, is that information all on the website there? Yes, for sure. Cool. You know, the number one way that people can support us is through uh, donations. Mm -hmm. We are able to do events based on people that donate to our organization. And I know it's, a, you know, that, that's what everybody says, right? But really, we need your help. If you, if you want to see a cleaner Bay Area, um, our funds, are directly used to better the environment, whatever that might be. Now, for those that aren't into cleaning up trash, that's the best way to give back is to do that. Um, another, another way that you can help us out if you don't like to clean up trash is share our videos. Like us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and TikTok. If you like what you see, share a video on your feed um, or tell somebody else about an organization that is passionate about the environment. And that really helps out as well for us to get out there. Um, we love working with corporate companies too. So uh, we've had a couple of corporate companies come on out and do a team building. And we do an excellent job at doing team building based around the environment. We educate those team members about the environment, what they can do at home and even at the workplace to conserve and to recycle properly. And then top of that, we bring people together by doing a trash cleanup. Because what better way to bring your team together um, you know, back into the office, if you're back in the office and by sweating together, by getting together, by breaking bread, by um, doing something positive for our environment and for our community. So we do that. And then also, if you don't mind getting nasty and dirty, come on out to one of our events. I promise you will make it super fun and super uh, easy for you to come and volunteer and we provide everything for you. So we have, you have no barriers to come here. The only <laughs> barrier is waking up in the morning and driving or taking an Uber or taking a, uh, a ride to one of our events. And we're promised we'll make you feel right at home. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the other end of the question is, oh, um, you mentioned that you can supply um, people if they wanted to uh, uh do just do some cleanup themselves or get their own group together and do something. Um, but uh, if hypothetically, if someone like maybe a mayor of another city or someone uh, like that, maybe someone high profile with a big company that wants to get like 10,000 people together, uh, how, uh, would they be able to just reach out to you? And um, would you? Yep. Okay. And uh, yep. all they that's can right reach there. 100%. They can reach out to me. If you'd like us to produce the event, we can definitely do that. Or um, what's even better is, uh, we want to see more groups out there, more neighborhood associations, more scouts, more churches out there or other other places um, to go out the companies, businesses to go and and take the responsibility onto themselves to clean the environment. We cannot be everywhere. And the other creek partners that are out there cleaning up trash like South Bay Clean Creeks Coalition, Keep Coyote Creek Beautiful or Guadalupe River Park Conservancy. We cannot do it all of our own. We need help. And so I love to see more groups out there, school groups, um, and taking the responsibility and organizing their own event. Super easy. The city of San Jose has a, has, a, has a program called Beautify SJ, Beautify San Jose. And they have a huge staff. And that staff is there to support the community. So if you need litter sticks, you need trash bags, you need gloves, they'll be able to hook you up with that. And we can connect you with them if you'd like to lead your own events. And I encourage that because they make it super easy for you to go and pick up those items, or sometimes I might even drop it off to your event. So if you live in the area of San Jose that needs a little extra love, 
uh, or you need a park that needs a little extra love, we could connect you with them. And, 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 it's, and they're such a great partner with our organization, as well as the other Creek cleanup organizations as well. Well, awesome. Uh, well, that about uh, covers all the bases I wanted to address. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share with our audience before, uh, before we depart? Yeah, totally. So if you have a, a, you know, if you have something inside of you that wants to do something good for the community, for the environment, or, you know, just the world in itself, I highly, highly, highly suggest you go and do it. Don't fear anything. Um, I know it, it may sound like, you know, easy or not easy. It sounds hard or it might sound easy coming from myself um, of where I came from um, and my background and, and everything else like that. But I'm just like you, you know, I had a vision and wanted to do something positive for the community and for the environment. And, and really what really helps is forming that team together, that bond of people that you know, and you'll be, you will be excited and motivated the fact that once you start doing something fun and awesome, it, it's just amazing on what doors will open for you. And those doors continue on opening up for us and for our organization as well, being connected with other people and, and doing that. And doing life together is so much better than doing it alone. And so I encourage you, get connected with people that are like-minded, get connected with people that are doing some positive things. And uh, life is way too short. We don't know when our expiration date is going to come up. It could be 10 years from now. It could be 50 years from now. But what we do know is that we can make lasting change just right now. And so I wanted to leave you all with that. And I really hope to see you at one of our events. And if not, we'd love to see you help us out and spread the word of conservation and to better our environment and to think about ways that you can conserve on, on trash at home, whether it's using reusable products uh, and, 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 and really thinking wisely about those choices that you make. Number one thing that you could do now is don't use plastic bottles. Don't use single use plastic bottles because guess what? Those plastic bottles really are not recyclable. It takes hundreds of years to really break down. And on top of that, these plastic bottles aren't really made from recycled material. Only 3% on average is made from recycled material. So if you have to get a single use plastic, you're doing an event or um, at work or whatever it might be, use a reusable water bottle or invest in a reusable machine uh, to be able to refill those water bottles. And if you gotta go, if you're traveling or whatever it might be, choose wisely on what you, you choose at the store. Look for an aluminum can, and I'm going to give a shout out to our friends at Liquid Death Mountain Water because they have a aluminum can of mountain water that's absolutely delicious, <laughs> and it's made from 70% of recycled material, and you know what? 10% of every uh, Liquid Death um, aluminum can that's purchased goes into getting rid of plastic use here in the entire world, so... Um, that's one small thing that you could do that'll definitely help out the environment, getting rid of those um, single use plastics. Yeah, thank you uh, for including all that, Justin. Um, and actually my new word to describe Justin, uh, at least the first word that comes to my mind is now inspirational because he is a very inspirational guy and uh, it really takes someone like him to run such a wonderful organization. And that being said, you heard it from him. They're doing a lot of great work. Uh, so uh, please, uh, if you're feeling led, go to the description below and support the trash punks. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, we are. Um, our, we couldn't do it without the help and support from our team leads, uh, from our board members to our leaders that come on out to every single event. And we're just I'm personally just super blessed to have them. Super thankful for them. And it's just uh, it's an amazing team that we have. And you can feel the energy that we have with the trash punks. And, you know, um, just one more thing going into 2022 and beyond. We're not thinking small dreams. We're thinking big dreams. We're going to be we're going to be helping out globally, our partners globally. So we are expanding not 
nationally. We're expanding globally with being able to physically support some of the other innovators that are turning trash or, or plastics to, into great things. So that's what also we have coming up uh, in 2022 is a bigger global outreach to benefit conservation. Well, thank you very much, Justin Momora. Uh, everyone, that was Justin Momora, the founder, president, guy who does everything in terms of where the ship is headed for the Trash Punks, wonderful organization you just learned a whole lot about. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. This was uh, the latest episode of the Mission Enlightenment Project. We'll catch you guys next time. <music>